Hello. Welcome to worship. Whether you're worshiping live with us on Facebook or watching us on YouTube or Facebook later in the week, we're glad to have you with us. Today we continue our series, Angels Among Us. We are now in our third week. We get a visit from the third angel in our message this morning. And today our theme is more joy, something we all could use in the days that we live in. So let us start our worship this morning or this time with a moment of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity to gather in whatever way we can to be safe, not only for ourselves, but safe for those around us. And Lord, today we hear the story of a man named Joseph. And he thinks that his world is crumbling around him, but God sends an angel and steps in and shows him the way that God has called him to live out his faith. So Lord, as we hear not only that story, but some special music today and some Christmas carols, may we be stirred. May our hearts be open. May our minds be open to hear your words for each and every one of us this day. In the name of your son, Jesus the Christ. Amen.
An angel of the Lord appeared and said, Joseph, son of David, don't be afraid to take Mary as your wife. She will give birth to a son, and you will call him Jesus. God reminds us to be still and know he is here. I will come to you in silence and lift you from your fear. God tells us he is hope for all who are hopeless. He is a light for those who long to see. He is a strength for those despairing. Healing for those in shame, God brings joy to the world. Sing together as we light the third candle of joy. He came down. Let us pray together. God our Father, our joy comes from you, that joy that filled the hearts of the angels, shepherds, Mary and Joseph, is the joy that still has the power to fill our hearts with joy. Our joy is because God has called us by name and given us the peace the world cannot give. Flood our hearts with joy this Advent season as we reflect on the good news of Jesus' birth. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. I'd like to thank the Powers family for sharing our Advent reading this morning. And now we have some special music from Morgan Borsma and Emily Sisler. Emery. <laughs> Emery, sorry, sorry, Emery. Come, they told me, pa-rum-bum-bum-bum, -bum -bum -bum. a newborn king to see, pa-rum-bum-bum-bum. -bum -bum. Our finest gifts we bring, pa-rum-bum-bum-bum, -bum -bum. to lay before the king, pa-rum-bum-bum-bum, rum-bum-bum-bum, rum-bum-bum-bum. So to honor him, pa rum bum bum bum, when we come. Baby Jesus, pa rum bum bum bum, I am a poor boy to pa rum bum bum bum, I have no That's fit to give our king pa rum pum 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 rum pum 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 rum pum 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 Shall I play for him pa rum pum 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 on my drum Mary nodded pa rum pum 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 the ox and lamb kept time pa rum bum 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 I played my best for him pa rum bum 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 I played my best for him pa rum bum 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 rum bum 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 rum bum 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 then he smiled at me, pa-rum-bum-bum-bum, bum, bum, bum. me and 
my drum. talking about Advent this month of December. Mrs. Swanson talked about hope and she talked about peace. Today I'm going to talk about joy. Now what could feathers have to do with joy? Hmm, maybe it's a pillow fight, but I don't think that our families would like me to talk about that. How about feathers could mean angels? Yes, that is what we're going to talk about. The story of angels and how much joy they brought during the Christmas story. I also decided <clears throat> to take some retro um, pictures that I had of old Christmas plays and inserted them into this story. So I hope you enjoy it. The shepherds were tending to their sheep. The angels appeared to tell them baby Jesus was about to be born. So they followed the star which brought them to baby Jesus and they were full of joy. Later the wise men came to bring the baby gifts which made them feel joy. As we prepare for Christmas, may we find things that give us joy. Next week, we'll take a break from talking about Advent as we present our virtual 
Christmas Sunday School Play The Christmas Nativity by Rachel Benjamin We look forward to showing it to you. Let us pray, dear Lord. Thank you for the joy you show to us every day. Now for our time of generosity, I have a couple of different stories. I want to start out by just saying this truth. God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. Uh, our first generosity story is that yesterday we passed out to the nine families that we had taken on the food baskets, the Christmas presents, and all that are going to allow them to have a much better Christmas this year. It's a tradition that not only ourselves, but all the churches in our area take on some families and sponsor them for Christmas. And yesterday, they were handed a handmade card from a young girl by the name of Tessa. It says, thank you, thanks to you, and Merry Christmas from Tessa. Thank you and a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. I am blessed and thank you for the food. Now our second story, you've often heard me say if you've listened to me much at all is that God does not work in mysterious ways as the popular saying says. It's just we haven't fully seen it yet. And I know the day will come, whether it's a day here on earth or a day when we're in the heavenly realm, when all of it will be exposed and we'll be able to see the whole process. But I want to tell you a story of an angel visit that we had this week. There are truly angels among us. I believe it was on uh, Monday we received a phone call in our office from a family in need. They had just moved to the area. They were looking for a, a, a gas card to be able to help them get back and forth to work to get their feet under them. Uh, one of them had just become employed in the, the town here. And then on Tuesday, an angel appeared and came into our office. And a lady that we did not recognize, did not know, and she said, I feel moved to come to this church and see if there's a family that you have in need that my family can sponsor this Christmas. So we put these two families, the young lady who called needing a gas card, I had talked to her that day and she came in on Wednesday and we gave her some food to get them through the holidays. And I asked her if it would be okay if this family helped them out this Christmas. And that is what is happening as we speak today. I talked to the family yesterday. They were going today to get items for this family. So angels truly are among us. And the generosity of our Lord who inspires us through the Holy Spirit to live out our faith in ways that are meaningful to other people. So again, thank you for being generous. Let us share together our prayer of dedication this morning. God of With all, all the, the angels, angels, we come before you bearing our tithes and offerings for spreading the good news of the Christ child's birth again this year. In this world desperate for the hope, peace, and joy Jesus offers to all, Use us also as bearers of good news in our community and around the world. In Jesus' holy name, we dedicate these gifts. Amen. Amen. Our prayer concerns on the board this morning and also our joys. <coughs> First and foremost, a joy for the vaccine rollout that is happening as we speak. Um, we know it's going to be several months before our world gets back to any semblance of normal, but we are truly blessed that God has given the gifts to the scientists and the many leaders who have helped this happen, and we give thanks for that. Our hearts are 
heavy, I think, at this time. We received word yesterday that uh, a fine man in our community, Dan Parker, passed away from COVID after a, a long and courageous battle uh, with the disease. He, he passed away, I believe it was on Friday evening. So we lift the family of Dan Parker this morning, uh, part of the Rotary here. He was just elected to a township position. So we lift Dan's family. Also the, the family of Tim Wilson, the nephew of Barb uh, Lewis, one of our folks from our congregation. Uh, Tim has also passed away and Barb gives thanks that he is no longer suffering. Also, we have, a, we have several people, but a couple in particular, who are uh, dealing with cancer. John Bremer is having an upcoming surgery here before Christmas, so we're lifting John. And also, Roz Snyder is um, in the process of recovering and continuing to take treatments for cancer. Also, there will be a Christmas offering that we normally take live on Christmas Eve, but since we're going online for Christmas Eve this year, we invite you to um, send some money to the church. I think you might be able to designate it on, online. I'm not positive, but if you would send some money in. It's going to the Newberry team that is going to be going up to Newberry, Michigan again on a mission trip in 2021. So let us come before our Lord in silent prayer at this time. Lord, as we quickly tumble towards Christmas of 2021, we struggle to find some normalcy. The traditions we can hold on to and so many things we have to let go of in the midst of this pandemic. We thank you, Lord, that Vaccines are rolling out. That our health care workers and those who are the most vulnerable will be receiving these vaccines in the coming weeks. We pray for the family of Dan Parker. And the joy and the, the love that he had for his family. The stories he would tell of his grandchildren. And we do also, Lord, pray for the family of Tim Wilson. And Lord, in this season, as we speak of joy today, as we move towards that day of joy when Jesus the Christ was born in a manger, may the love and the rejoicing that happened that day be alive in us again this year. May we live out who you created us to be, even in these most challenging times. And Lord, I thank you for the angels among us who offer help to families in need who have donated so that nine families from our church can have a better Christmas, not from our church, but from our area, that we are to, able to live out our faith through our church to others and be angels to others. So Lord, in this day, we give you thanks for the season of Advent, a time of preparation, as we share the prayer in which Jesus taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. got to admit, when I put together our focus text for today, Lois Bremer came to my mind. Focus text is, do not be afraid. And she often has reminded me, and I know she has often reminded her family, and, and many of you have heard it, that in the Bible there are some 365 ways that we hear the words, do not be afraid, do not fear, I am with you. So instead of quoting where that scripture came from, I just wrote all through the Bible. <laughs> Thank you, Lois. Have you ever had those times in your life when it was just easier to walk away? 
than to deal what, with what is in front of you. There's a lot of sayings that go along with this. Cut, bait, and run. It's a popular one among fishermen. Is the juice worth the squeeze here? You need to cut your losses and just walk away. The man in today's scripture reading certainly had those feelings. After all, he was engaged to a young girl. And now she is pregnant. And he knows that the baby is not his. Ironically, today's theme is more joy. At this point, the man could say, there is no joy in my life. There certainly doesn't seem to be any joy for the man in our reading today. Maybe you have had times when you felt this way also. You have gotten some bad news or an unexpected challenge and you could not find any joy in the situation. What does God say about those times? I'd like to invite Shannon Powers to come up and read from the book named after her husband, Matthew. Matthew 1, verses 18 through 25. Joseph accepts Jesus as his son. This is how the birth of Jesus the Messiah came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph. But before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. But he did not consummate their marriage until she gave birth to a son, and he gave him the name Jesus. Thank you, Shannon. Oh, my. He found out that what he thought was bad news was really a challenge from God. He did what most men do. We figure out how to fix things. He had a solution cut bait and run but be nice about it Joseph did not want to expose her to public disgrace it says he had in mind to divorce her quietly and number one in our message notes this morning like we humans do quite often our solution is not what God has in mind. You see, our solutions are often too small. God had something much, much bigger in mind for Joseph. The scripture said, because Joseph, her husband, was faithful, so because of his faith, God challenged Joseph. God sends our third angel today. And we see yet another reaction. Our first angel, the angel of hope, is when Zechariah kind of freaked out. 
our second angel, the angel of peace, came to Mary and she was perplexed and she asked a couple of questions, then said yes. But today, while Jesus, or while Joseph is asleep, when the angel comes and says to him in a dream, do not be afraid. It is all explained then to him in a dream. The interesting thing about this story of Joseph is Joseph never speaks in the scriptures. He doesn't wake up in a cold sweat. He doesn't wake up from this dream screaming. He doesn't cut bait and run. Even though he's in a tight spot. He gets up and does what the Lord had asked. Or as the scripture says, he does what the angel commanded him. Could Joseph have went through with his own solution, ignoring what God called him to do? Yes, absolutely. Free will. His life would have been much different. His life may even have been in peril. Instead, Joseph chose to follow God anyway. No matter the embarrassment, the scorn he might receive from those around him, of his wife becoming pregnant and knowing it's not his, he chose to follow God anyway. He chose not to be afraid. He chose to live into who God created him to be. I wonder if Joseph ever found comfort in one of the most affirming scriptures of God's plan for us. It comes from the Old Testament, so it was written long before this time. I don't know if Joseph had access to the book of Isaiah or not. Or the book of Jeremiah. Jeremiah 29, 11 reads these words, and I can imagine Joseph hearing them. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. So how does it challenge us here today? Ever say to yourself, I'm done with it? I'm so over it? I'm going to want you to take just a few moments and fill in that blank of what the answer of that might be. What is it that you're just so over? Or what is it that you're done with? Maybe at times you've even said, I have no joy in my life. I heard myself say these very same words. I believe it was somewhere in 2007, 2008. A friend of mine in the fall, we got together and he asked me, how you doing, Tony? And I said, I have no joy in my life. And I couldn't believe I heard myself say that. But there were a lot of issues going on at the time. My mother's health was not good. My daughter Abby had staph infection in her leg and we were trying to find at the time if she was even going to keep her leg or possibly, worst case scenario, was her life. And my church was not going well. There had been some major turmoil. Many people had left the church. One of my solutions was leaving pastoral ministry. I believed I was a failure. Within minutes of hearing myself say that I had no joy in my life, 
I believe it was the Holy Spirit that convinced me. I walked out in the hallway away from my friend and called the doctor's office and got an appointment. I was diagnosed with an acute case of depression. I received medication. I sought out a therapist, went to some counseling, and all of these were gifts from God. But what about you? What about that blank that you just filled in, the things that maybe you're tired of dealing with? Maybe it's a wayward child. Maybe it's a troubled marriage. Maybe it's gambling or alcohol. Maybe it's a whole list of things like I had. Sometimes we just get overwhelmed by what seems like insurmountable issues. Yes. Yes, you will try to come up with a solution on your own. You will want to cut bait and run. Our scripture tells us to wait upon the Lord, to listen for the Holy Spirit's guiding. It may even come through an angel. Tune in to God's way and tune out of your own way. God has the best solution for whatever it is you're dealing with. One would think Joseph maybe would have looked back on this event and said to himself, It is well with my soul. Because he said yes to God's call. Number two in our message notes this morning. Ultimately, what Joseph thought was bad news and what Joseph thought was a challenge from God was really a gift. Joseph, a faithful man, was entrusted with raising Emmanuel. God with us is the meaning of Emmanuel. Jesus, the Son of God. God's solution was much much bigger than Joseph's solution. By accepting the challenge, Joseph received one of the greatest gifts of all. Joseph found more joy when he followed God's way. Instead of his own way, life became way better. One year after the day that I had spoken out loud that I had no joy in my life and everything had seemed overwhelming the year before, my daughter Abby was walking again and cured. The church that I was the pastor of had turned the corner. For the first time in my eight years of pastoral ministry at that time, I realized God had created me to be a pastor, and I finally accepted that. I was not a failure. I had received my calling as a gift from God. Believe me when I tell you, God's way is way better. I'm not sure how that lands for you. Knowing that your pastor struggles in life also. Knowing your pastor takes medication every day to live a better life. I believe it helps me to know about what you're going through and be able to relate even better. Today at this moment, I can say it as well with my soul. I hope I can say that tomorrow, and I hope I can say it next year. If not, I will still pray to follow God 
anyway. I will try to not be afraid. And I will read Jeremiah 29, 11 over and over and over. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to give you, plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. That we may find more joy. What if? Number three in our message notes. What if we lived out our faith by seeing God's call upon us as a gift? What if we follow God's way instead of our way? What if, like Joseph, our life became way better? And what if, no matter our solution, we follow God anyway? And what if we can say, it is well with my soul? Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Today, maybe we can say it as well with our soul. And we pray that we can say it tomorrow and next year. And if not, may we still pray to follow you anyway. And Lord, we will try to not be afraid. And we will look for those words and cherish those words that say, For I know the plans I have for you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. And Lord, sometimes our own solutions seem so bleak. May we always remember to turn to you to listen to you, to listen whether it's the Holy Spirit encouraging us in a direction or another person who you utilize as an angel to point us in a way that gives us more joy. Lord, in this year we have plenty of reasons to not find joy, but may we follow you anyway that in 2020 we may find more hope, more peace, and more joy in Jesus the Christ as he is born anew to us this year. We offer this in Jesus' name. Amen.
quite a few announcements this morning. Um, first, I'm changing some of the Zoom things that I have offered. I'm going to go to one Zoom, we're calling it Zoom Fellowship, on Wednesday nights at 7 o'clock. You can come join us and hear the voices and see the faces of others in our congregation and just share how, uh, how, how life is going and have a little bit of prayer together. Um, if you do not get our normal connecting point or an email and you'd like to join us, please uh, email myself or the office and we will get you that link. Also, the, pr the prayer drive-through that I've been doing for a couple weeks with the weather changing, I'm going to um, delay that now until spring. Hopefully, spring and summer, but I'll be able to just set out by the road and, and offer prayers to those driving by. Um, but I will be doing a Bible study each week, be posting something like I did on Facebook. That seemed to work very well for people to be able to see it when it works for them. And then secondly, our ad board did meet last week and the governor did offer a new order uh, through the 20th of December. So um, the ad board made the decision that we will uh, not have in-person worship through December 27th or through the end of the year. Um, that will happen. Um, Christmas Eve, we will be having a Christmas Eve service that you can view online. Uh, that will be posted at 5 o'clock on Christmas Eve, so however that works for your family. Um, I do encourage you to wear pajamas like I'll be doing and, and some of us that are here will be doing. And send us in some pictures of that. We would love to uh, enjoy Christmas Eve together. Also on the 27th, we will continue with two of our normal traditions. It will be ugly Christmas sweater Sunday. Uh, you'll be doing it at home, but we would love to have pictures posted on Facebook of everybody in their ugly sweaters, and there will be a blessing of the toys that week also. So a lot still going on um, in this coming week and we as we move towards Christmas. So let us claim joy to the world. into the world and look you just may find evidence of angels among us go in God's peace love others as God has loved you find more joy amen Sweet bring, ba ba bum bum. To 
Pom Pom.